Hello all, uh, welcome to the panel, Teams of the Future of the COVID Shift. So COVID has not merely transformed the industry, the digitization industry into a higher gear. It has transformed businesses themselves into what we now sometimes refer to as new normal, continuously evolving world, post-COVID world, and many such monikers. As we focus today on building world-class products from India, let's begin this session by acknowledging that Teams from the foundational building block of any great product. As Helen Keller once said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. So let's ask this question, how are teams evolving? And to answer this question and a few more, it is my pleasure to invite our distinguished panelists for today's session. First, I would like to invite Ravi Chabria. Ravi is the managing director for NetApp India, where he oversees the strategic direction of NetApp's global center of excellence located at Bangalore. Ravi is a technology veteran with a career spanning nearly three decades. Ravi has also held various roles at leading technology companies such as Sun, Silicon Graphics, and several early stage startups. Ravi has a bachelor's in engineering from Bangalore University, postgraduate diploma in software engineering from TFR Mumbai, and an MS in computer science from Penn State University. Welcome on board, Ravi. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Arun Kulkarni, Arun is a senior director HR for Target India and has about 17 years of experience in a wide range of functions, ranging from being an HR business partner, talent management, organization design, large scale change management, HR operations, and quite a few. He currently leads HR business partner team for Target India. Arun completed his bachelor's of business administration from Bangalore University and postgraduate degree in executive leadership from XLRA Jamshadpur. Welcome on board, Arun. Next, I would like to invite Rupa Raj. Rupa Raj is a Vice President, Head of IT, APJ, and Global Head of Engineering, SaaS Transformation at VMware. At VMware, she is responsible for CIO functions across Asia Pacific and Japan region, and is also leading the cross engineering functions globally for enterprise SaaS and subscription transformation. Rupa started her career in the US as a software developer and explored various roles within technology, grew up to be a holistic leader, relocated back to India a few years ago, and has continued playing global leadership roles from India. Prior to joining VMware, Rupa was Vice President, Global Technology Transformation and Partner Management at Thomson Reuters. Rupa has a Bachelor's in Computer Science from PES College of Engineering. So welcome Ravi, Rupa and Arun. Glad to have you on this panel today. Obviously, one of the most exciting topics uh, personally for me, which is <coughs> Within, within the whole talent summit, while the whole discussion has been about individuals, war for talent, uh, all <coughs> products, all teams run, uh, you know, all the digital transformation we talk about runs on groups of people coming together, that is teams. So I'm very excited that we will be talking about that now. Before we uh, start, what I wanted to hear from you was based on what you've seen in the last two years, and definitely there has been a change. A significant change in the way work has been happening itself for all of us everyone of us has experienced that so with examples from your own experience in your respective organizations and also your observation of behaviors across the ecosystem can you tell us how teamwork itself is evolving the question is very simple has the fundamental nature of how we interact as teams changed or is it that our the teamwork model has stayed the same. It's just that we are doing it on Zoom. So, Rupa, would you like to go first and walk me through you know, what you have observed over the last two years? Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Srikant. Um, as you rightly said, the teamwork has definitely changed quite drastically, right? Um, when the pandemic started, we all know that you know teamwork shifted more than 90% remote overnight. I would say uh, this is one of the most rapid evolutions of ways of uh, teamwork, right? Uh, many teams uh, might have struggled initially to cope up, but had to adapt quickly and start leveraging tools and technology to be able to work uh, effectively you know, remotely. But over the last uh, couple of years, the enablement of technology or the effective use of uh, right tools and the technology to boost the teamwork has gotten matured quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, lot of focus on how technology can enhance uh, employee experience and also the overall team experiences. A lot of innovation in this, uh, in this area as well. For example, I can... Uh, I can talk about uh, VMware. Our entire uh, new joiner experience is very, very smooth now. And it's all zero touch IT, right? We don't procure laptop first. 
we don't image it, we don't ship it and bring it back for patching and so on and so forth. So new laptop is uh, shifted directly to a new joiner. And then on the day of onboarding, the person logs in and the entire process automatically kicks in and the entire setup is uh, ready to go within a couple of, couple of hours, right? Um, so uh, employee is enabled to start the work on day one. So proud to say that you know, we are uh, able to do that within, within VMware using our own uh, digital workplace uh, products. So similarly, when it comes to uh, teams, you know, focusing on, for example, the developer experience, uh, in VMware, we use uh, our own uh, Tanzu suite of products catering for application, build, uh, run, and manage activities, which will boost the productivity of the entire development teams quite significantly. Right. So also the teams have uh, gotten a lot more matured on collaborative use of technology for, for work. Uh, so today, uh, virtual teamwork has evolved to a point where online collaboration is the way of working and a new norm going forward as well, right? Uh, of course, this has um, this has a lot of advantages. Teams will have the flexibility on where they're going to work from, and uh, it's going to be their choice. But at the same time, the organizations will have access to broader set of talent and able to attract more talent, etc. But the but the question now is, how do we really uh, make the remote teamwork as productive or more productive than how it used to be when the teams were mostly collocated or uh, more importantly, how do we how do we improve the team productivity while improving the work-life balance and enhancing the well-being? That's the key thing. Uh, this is what I would say we have to uh, focus on. You know, Though the teams have gotten used to remote working now, uh, they are saving time on commuting and so on and so forth. There are also a lot of concerns if you notice that working hours have gotten longer. This is number one team concern today, right? You know, they are there are uh, meeting fatigues. Uh, teams are uh, expressing concerns that you know they are starting work way earlier than they used to be and then ending much later than they used to be. And they are uh, more than more importantly, they are unable to focus much on well-being. There are a lot of well-being concerns, you know, that are that are coming up. So uh, some of these are not sustainable. So very very uh, important areas to focus on. Uh, so how do we, um, how does the team evolve over the next couple of years addressing these concerns, right? You know, so work, work life balance has become very, very individualistic now. Team members uh, would not only appreciate the flexibility of working location, but also would appreciate probably the flexibility of the working hours. Uh, so, so how do we tackle this? You know, that's the main thing, right? That's that I would say is the next set of evolution. Right. So, so my view is one of the ways that we can tackle this is team needs to work uh, work or the learn the art of working asynchronously, right? Which means the team members need not have to be online simultaneously. Uh, team members uh, need to maximize their productivity without waiting for others to complete their task, etc. This requires trust and transparency, and more importantly, communication, right? A lot of changes. So communication outside of the typical meeting or a video call, you know, that's what I'm referring to, right? And 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 it's a it's a it's a balance, and it's a balance uh, teams need to achieve with the goal of maximizing productivity and efficient use of use of their times. And this requires a mind shift, and co-creation is also a very very important concept going forward. Uh, team members need to care a lot more about what they want to achieve as a whole team and plan and take action accordingly instead of carving out the individual and, and uh, you know, specific tasks that are assigned to each member. You know, because the idea is, again, to, uh, you know, efficient use of time, which means, you know, they can't be waiting uh, time or they, they can't be waiting for some other team members to you know, complete their task and wasting their time, right? You know, so so, so it's, it's an art. It's an art, and the team has to uh, evolve, you know, mastering this art yeah. over the coming years, I would say. No, there are some great points, Rupa, and especially that team, uh, you know, individuals working together, the behavioral part will deep dive into it in just a few minutes. But I want to now hear, Ravi, uh, what according to you is the, uh, you know, evolution of teamwork. Is it so even evolving? So has the teamwork, nature of teamwork changed? It has, it has. And, you know, I'd also say that, you know, if I focus on outcomes, right, outcomes have changed also. And then you can kind of tie that back to what's actually made it happen. I just wanted to kind of just a nod to Rupa. I think she touched upon all the issues. But one thing that I think really stood out for me, Rupa, is that note on teams have to now learn to work asynchronously, right? And that's something it's a it's a very interesting concept. We've never had that conversation before. You know, if you work in shift work, you understand that. But in core product development as a product company, that's a new concept. And I think it's a it's a skill we've all picked up. Focusing on outcomes, right? Um, 
I actually look at the outcomes across the organization and they've actually increased. And I don't think it's always because we've been spending more time at work. Now, that is a problem, right? Burnout is a problem, but it's not the predominant driver for why we're having positive outcomes. Number one, I think, is this it's broken down this uh, affinity people have to location. Everybody is equal, right? So now the overwhelming issue really comes down to is, okay, if you're working even across time zones, right? Or working across a team in India and a team in Israel or a team in Vancouver or a team in Boulder or Sunnyvale, what kind of matters a little bit is there has got to be some amount of overlap for what you need to do work with. Working asynchronously is, again, another very important piece, but it's equal for everyone, right? So there is a now an advantage to being able to work together. It's There's an inherent advantage because location is not where it's happening. The conference room is not where it's happening. It's happening on a Zoom call. So those are big advantages. Um, there have been surprises too. So I remember when the pandemic just struck, and I mean just struck as in we were having a major you know, security conference on our campus in Bangalore. And while we are figuring out whether that goes on or off, we are also figuring we're going to announce a day off so that we can see if our technology is in place, right? Yeah. So the remarkable piece that we all learned, companies that had the tech infrastructure thrived. Right. And the companies that did not have it quickly sought out that infrastructure to build it. And it made all the difference. I think uh, kudos to a lot of people in the Indian, larger Indian ecosystem that we had a telecom infrastructure in the last two years that did not exist four years or five years ago. Right. So you have to give that credit to. Um, I think the parts where we've seen the largest value is where collaboration across teams came in. And I'll tell you why that happened. At the underlying platform level, our platforms have become more service oriented. That was just pure luck, I think, right? Four years ago, you wouldn't have seen service oriented platforms and as a development framework. Mm -hmm. That's been in place now also. So it just kind of allowed you to kind of do things without skipping a beat. And then this geographical kind of, you know, as I say, the affinity to geography being broken down, unlikely teams ended up collaborating to great effect. I think the most uh, happy outcome, I would say, we have a fairly large development center in Bangalore. It's actually been set up to introduce customers to NetApp also. And what we found that the reach for that extended beyond Bangalore, beyond India, in fact, even beyond parts of APAC, it started touching even EMEA. So we've now started talking about our capability to engage customers in India is if you need to talk to the technologists, you come to India. If you want to go talk to the strategists and the ex and the executives, you're going back to the headquarters. So it, it's it's a powerful shift, very powerful shift. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so quite a few points over there. I'll get back to some of the points in our yeah. next. But um, Arun, quickly, what do you yeah. think? Has, has it evolved or a fundamental nature of teamwork or was it always the same and it's just the yeah. tools that have changed? What do you think? Yes, I think great inputs from Rupa and Ravi. Uh, I would definitely say, Shrikant, that it has evolved for sure. And it has made organizations reflect on many aspects uh, as shared, like remote work, technology solutions, collaborative mindset, and things like those, and many more. Uh, I think we were all, in the last 20 months, at the beginning of it, we were all part of the same journey where everybody had to transition their workforce to remote working. Uh, at the same time, I think we had to focus on keeping the essence of team camaraderie and teamwork alive. I think that was the challenge, right, for in, uh, ahead of all of us. And knowing the topic for today around teamwork, I would like to share a little bit in terms of how Target, as an example, one organization that took on that journey. I think for us, being intentional about our culture of care uh, being inclusive, empathetic, and listening to our team members, I think is what helped ease into the transition of new ways of working, right? Uh, and how do you make that decision? I think it was very important as a first step for any organization probably that acknowledging that teamwork is going to go through a fundamental shift. I think organizations which took a step back and uh, agreed that, yes, I think it's going to see a fundamental shift and we have to be prepared for it, were well ahead. and it enabled them to navigate teamwork a lot more easier. Uh, I think for any organization, 
its organization's culture as the backdrop to make the decision, I think is going to help them thrive. So again, for us, it was our culture of care, grow and win together with additional focus on listening to our team members, which is how do we help help them to ensure that they're able to transition, keeping our culture intact as an organization. So what I think as many organizations, we also rallied behind them through the difficult time. I'm sure we've all spoken about range of resources that have been provided to our team members. But at the center of our decision making was relevancy and flexibility. I think it was very important to understand, am I continuing to stay relevant? Because the speed at which you had to shift and change and adapt was significant. So that was another element I would like to say came was very important. And then post that is when you decide how do you amplify teamwork? Uh, as uh, spoken earlier, I think both from Ravi and Rupa, collaboration tools, I think organizations which had those were able to thrive really earlier. Also the collaborative culture uh, also came into light, which is, I'm sure for Target, there was various cross-functional teams that we leveraged. Uh, because cross-functional teams brings you diverse knowledge, skill set, which will help you to come together to collaboratively problem solve, make decisions more swiftly, right? I think uh, earlier in that you know, physical environment, you did not probably have the same amount of cross-functional nature of working. And in the Zoom environment, I think creating that was very, very important. The second one was communication channels. I think being open to hear from team members in a variety of different ways on how do they want to accomplish work, whether it is formal ways of team member service or whether it is uh, listening sessions, leader check-ins. I think enabling all of that and keeping staying true to that, I think was also very, very critical. I think leaders played a very important role in uh, enabling teamwork, which is how are they adapting as leaders and ensuring that they're staying true to the traits that are needed now to enable teamwork, which, which could be, how am, I, how am I demonstrating empathy, resilience, inclusion, communication, prioritization, and am I leading with clarity, which were traits you needed in the past for sure, but I think it became even more important as, you, as we all transition to working remotely. I think lastly, I would say uh, designing workplaces I think it's also important to understand that as certain teams have already started to come back to work or some teams will come come back to work, I think the mindset has changed. And it's important that we create physical workspaces which are also more flex and collaborative in nature for teams to operate and get work done. So that's what Srikanth, I would say, on how the team work is about. Excellent points, Arun. And I'm trying to look at you know, you know uh, the key takeaways, right? One is... I think we have to acknowledge this change was too rapid, it was absolutely unpredictable. But there are some things from what I understand from Ravi, there, there was a sort of like a serendipity. We uh, companies, at least a large uh, sector of section of companies in the Indian IT industry, at least, we had the tech infrastructure so you could move fast. And there was this sort of BCP planning mentality, which helped, uh, you know, not lose the grip on the company itself. Um, and the challenge was to and the, uh, to keep the culture intact and I think so you couldn't skip deliverables through, through whatever, right? And I think definitely, uh, you know, a credit where it's due, a lot of leaders jumped in. Nobody experienced this before, but everyone came together and figured out one or the other way to make it work. So definitely while the tech helped one part, the leaders actually did rapid, uh, you know, uh, adapting of themselves to this, to this new normal. <laughs> or what was new normal at that time. The new normal keeps changing, right? Every six months. Um, but definitely there is from, and Rupa, to your point, there is, it, it is a great time to actually start thinking about async work. And I think Ravi, you also seconded on that, right? That uh, it is probably definitely a new, it, it's a chance to look at work differently. And Arun, as you said, I think when people come back to offices, it's never going to be the same again, right? The things have changed now. So uh, whether the two, whether the approach will be async work or a mix, a bunch of things. I think quite interesting set of takeaways uh, from uh, you know the points you shared. So thanks for that. So Ravi, I have a question for you. So mm -hmm. as you're aware, the, the focus of NPC this year is building world-class products from India. Yeah. So and with this background, right? And we have done quite well. Uh, at least most companies have done quite well in you know responding to this change. Leaders have responded. There is tech uh, to support this, and there are leaders trying to make sure the culture stays. 
coming back to building world class products from india either made for india or made for the rest of the world mm-hmm. do we believe this has propelled us as teams and because teams are the building block again as teams are we now more prepared to build global products from india and make the world class from india theme a stronger reality or you think that no this unequivocally the answer is yes unequivocally the answer is yes we are better prepared i will not even say that it is just uh, the pandemic driven kind of change that we went through see if you just step back a little bit industry was already transforming digital has been a word that's been bandied around for more than a decade now but it was getting to be very real what the pandemic did was it just fundamentally accelerated it completely okay so that's one the acceleration the digital acceleration that came in um over and above what was already accelerating right that's number one second is i think you go look at the indian ecosystem just go look at there are now 30000 startups in india right there's a um, i've stopped counting the unicorns right makes me jealous but but you can it's it's the cat is out of the bag it's not going back in right so we are a product company we are a global we are a we are a, a country that's capable of building global products we are building global products um the number of startups that we are kind of even personally engaging with that have a global aspiration this is just astounding so there's a large number of them right um so i'd say you can say that it was always here it was accelerated because i think there are way more old digital businesses today than we would have contemplated even 2 years ago the third opportunity i'd say is that you know which is a very net app thing so it may but but other companies are going through that too companies that have been around for a while right have been transforming themselves as as the world becomes more service oriented more server software oriented more cloud focused today net app is essentially a cloud led software company as opposed to if you looked at us 20 years ago we were an enterprise focused data storage company it's a huge transformation now why does it matter to teamwork it matters to teamwork because as we recruit people as we develop them and as you know that leads to us being able to retain them long term we're able to give people interesting work to do right we're at the cutting edge of technology what used to be kind of mainstream software development is now serverless or you know containerized or cloud native it's completely different it's allowing teams to kind of collaboratively learn new skills right and i think rupa touched upon that a bit too and i'm hoping we'll hear more from her but this is something all of us are going through right that's a very powerful statement too because it's building a talent pool for india that is going to be a source of national competitive advantage in that way so I, you know just start counting i think the number of these startups that end up succeeding and the number of unicorns that we build in and the number of them that are actually going to serve global companies right yeah um, like i said the first decade of the millennium india was known for low cost yeah the second millennium we were very second decade we were very clear we are running the world's data centers yeah right so everything that was sitting somewhere else was sitting in india now this one fundamentally different we are building product very interesting yeah so uh, arun and rupa are you seeing that in your interactions with startups or within your own teams in your respective segments technology retail are you seeing this uh, the same thing that ravi is seeing on the ground oh yes um and if i can start uh, sorry arun uh, i mm-hmm. definitely do whatever ravi said right you know it's pretty much the same case in ravi and bear as well um it's supporting all uh, what ravi said right i also want to emphasize that you know um uh, there are a lot of other things that's kind of you know, strengthening the independent product development from 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 india one is the decision making you know there are decision making makers sitting out of sitting out of india and there are very uh, key roles like the product managers etc and that is definitely strengthening right uh so and then um i would also like to call out that you know in the leadership roles the leaders who would have this global charters who, the leaders who would have this accountability to build the end to end products those roles are coming into india as well so all these yeah. things would strengthen this you know pretty very very well going forward yeah yeah 
Yeah. Arun, from retail, yeah. I know that you have you have your legs full in retail, right? So, are you seeing any sector specific? Are you seeing any? Uh, no, I agree with both uh, uh, Ravi and Rupa. I think one thing I would just add, Shrikant, is I think it is all all is bought all of us close in that one Zoom window. I think it just enables the nature of our conversations and the type of conversations that we get involved to be even more strategic. So I think that has enabled and I feel that will further propel the nature of kind of work that can happen out of India even more. I think that just uh, is something that we all experienced with the pandemic. Yeah. So I don't on uh, my next question to you, right? So yeah. um, pre pandemic, right? Um, Everyone has experienced what what a cooler conversations are like, right? Those are usually tend to be the best. Whether whether you are a junior software developer or a junior HR person or a senior, there will always be a different water cooler for you, and those are always the best. And those didn't happen over the last two years, right? Uh, yes. So Zoom calls very agenda specific. Everyone is trying to get outcomes agendas. Um, so the fact that people have you could you could argue, right? If they've lost, we've lost touch with water cooler conversations, maybe, right? So, uh, uh, given the fact that most of the calls are very agenda focused on Zoom, right? Uh, do you think? Do you think this is a good thing, bad thing? Do you think it's coming back in a big way? Is going to come back, but not in? It's not, they're not going to be a water cooler. What do you think? Great question, Shrikant. I, uh, I would say. I at least hope to believe that it has translated in the virtual world, right? For sure. And how the last 20 months has gone by and team members and are working remotely, right? Organizations have figured out a way of cadence or routines to sustain and elevate their culture. So I would say it took time for the industry to understand how do you translate water cooler conversations into uh, on virtual setting. I think it definitely took time. It definitely took time for us because we all got our heads down to see those informal connects, those informal meetings that you were having, how are we going to replace that? And as an organization, are we formally responsible for bringing that to life, right? Yeah. However, I think over time, I would say it has. I think uh, every organization has probably figured out a way to replace that moment of water cooler conversations. And I'm sure there is work continuously that is still going on, right? So whether it is bringing in technology solutions, whether I think I'm sure we've all gone through uh, listening sessions, virtual happy hours, virtual lunch connects, or just setting up time to talk about, hey, uh, how, are, how are you dealing with pandemic right now? I think those have all opened up avenues for our team members. And I think as an organization, it was a responsibility to create those moments. And if as we created those moments, I think team members were more than ready to use those moments and leverage it for the conversations that was not just work and getting work done. So for Target, uh, Shrikant, I would like to share an example, which we found a way to, I think, bring the water cooler conversations online. And that was through Instagram, right? I think this helped people to stay connected and engaged. And why? Why we took that decision was how can we play out the company culture using Instagram? Hmm. I think firstly, we all wanted to stay connected, right, with our team members, despite the fact that they were all working from different corners of the country. Uh, Instagram is a platform of choice for many team members today, even, right? I think there is already versatility that this platform brings. I think since most yeah. of our team members were already on it, also, there is no need to download one more app or a tool to connect for team members. Uh, I think how we leverage that is by putting in content that is empathetic, inclusive, honest, and open. We use the platform for like employee appreciation, enabled informal dialogue amongst employees on uh, practices that we were uh, rolling out. We also used it to extend engagement, which including like including team member families, uh, organizing family symphony events during like our annual meetings. A uh, talent show for family members of our team members, right? I think Instagram's versatility made it a best alternative specifically to replace the water cooler conversation. I'm sure there are other platforms which yeah. will meet the needs of other things, right? So that I think is one thing that I would say has definitely helped. The other which I've also seen in the industry and also exists in our company is the buddy system or an onboarding buddy. Not primarily to, as we were all continuing to hire through the pandemic, 
not just for work related but hey do i have a friend before i start in this organization and can i connect with somebody much before i have made the decision to join an organization i think that has worked well as well to at least understand the company culture and how uh, you can start having some of those water cooler conversation types even before you joined an organization and build a relationship right so that's another one which i think is a sustainable practice and uh, adapting that will hugely benefit organizations in uh, maintaining the company culture great this is a very interesting innovative uh, you know uh, you know stuff there arun so rupa and ravi so a big part of what we call as water cooler conversations was also the serendipity right like if you work in a large org you are in one department you would rarely ever meet someone else from the other department um because you're too busy in your meetings but th- that entity in the office the water cooler provides an opportunity to bump into someone and say hey i didn't know you're working on this one right so a lot of it was serendipity and uh, ravi you pointed out right like when when the pandemic hit you know this whole moving we had tech so that serendipity definitely helped us transform quite a bit so uh, so rupa and ravi what do you Think. How do you? How can you codify and build serendipity back into the water cooler conversation? Well, um, I was smiling all along only because uh, I've experienced it. I joined VMware about six months ago. Uh, to be honest, how much ever I was, I had mentally prepared. This is really not going to happen. There's not going to be any work. Typical water cooler conversations. I've been in the industry for twenty yeah. years. Have never experienced. when the reality hits it's a very different experience every minute and every day for the first few days i just used to wish and then always used to you know how would i do it how do i do it it's not about uh, you know you don't know what to do it but as i once said uh, the the reality is it, the way the water cooler conversations were happening typically has changed now it's not really good or bad it's just you know that we have to adapt to it and you have to make a deliberate point to adapt to it you know at least that was my experience right you know first few days i was i just felt that i just kept on wishing and then i realized you know how do i really you know explore the alternative ways and then as uh, arun called out you know even in vm where are some platforms like vm social etc uh, which i could leverage and then as i said the only thing is uh, it is a conscious effort you know one has to put in that conscious effort to get the same outcome that we used to have yeah. as part of the conversation that's the key Just, Ravi? That's it. Yeah, and you know, awesome, very excellent points. I think both of them have made Arun as well as Rupa. Um, I'll just say one thing, right? Over two years, it's pretty clear this is a skill that you have to develop if you're going to thrive. And we know that initially, it was, are you going to survive it or not? If you don't do it well, and we all struggled through it, right? Two years into it, you just know there are certain things absolutely do work. I'll also say there are a number of traditional things that we did that kind of worked out a little better, right? So we always had this notion of hackathons. It's a way for people to get together and do stuff, and we've had a very formal approach to it, right? With a deliberate approach to it in terms of investment. So that I think you can see the outcomes are increasing. In some cases, we started encouraging teams to collaborate in a manner where you worked off the roadmap, right? So it didn't have to be a real product, but you kind of went connected with another team and said, "You know what? Can we try something out?" Now you remember earlier I was talking about the cost of developing software has gone down because we are developing it on very agile platforms, right? As cloud apps, etc. So the question is that you can kind of turn things around very fast, also, and um, that's creating a lot of buzz. And what we are able to do is find visibility for some of those things. So the first person that does this gets a spotlight. The next ten that do it get a little bit of spotlight. Now it's kind of picking up like an epidemic of its own because people are kind of putting up and you know. So then the product managers come in and say, "Hey, you know what? You did this POC. Don't you think you should have talked to me before?" And, and the whole idea is, well, you know, it doesn't happen at a water cooler, right? Those yeah, like yeah. things. So, so you kind of try to allow that to happen. So. it's just working i think reasonably really well see there's another thing that's getting people to talk to each other again it's the change being driven in the industry a lot of folks are mastering new skills they are trying of kind of let where does the learning come from so they are learning from peers somebody comes in from the outside he's learned a new skill you're sitting here with very deep knowledge in a particular domain we're seeing that kind of collaboration picking up also um we've been experimenting with many other things um you know how do you replace a family day um 
those are tough things, right? I mean, these yeah. are things people do look forward to. Um, I think as we get into flex work mode again, right? What NetApp calls thrive everywhere. We do feel that we might be able to balance both out. Yeah. Sure. It, maybe you come to work because you know you have a sports event for this week, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Great. Thanks, Ravi. We have about two and a half minutes left. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Rupa, I have one last question for you. Um, do we hire differently right now? So, we, we talked about teams, and a big part of team is getting the team in place. Has anything changed in the way we hire and build teams at all? Oh, uh, definitely, Shrikant. Great question, though. Very relevant. We definitely hire uh, differently now because uh, a need has changed. Demand has changed, right? And demand has transformed, I would say. Uh, so uh, what we need to look for in a candidate while hiring has also drastically changed. Over the last uh, couple of uh, years, you know, I think uh, Arun and Anne and Ravi, both of them touched on it. You know, organization had to quickly adopt to rapid changes and had to be responsive. And more importantly, uh, organizations had to be resilient to be uh, more successful. So we have witnessed yeah. that you know resilient organizations were better able to respond and course correct quickly and, and uh, adopt to change, right? So the talent uh, within the organization also exhibit the same characters. Only then char uh, organization as a whole will be able to do that. So we no longer just focus on efficiency. And I would say resiliency is very, very important. To build a more responsive organization, we have to design roles and structure around the outcomes. Outcomes you know, was touched upon by Arun and yeah. uh, Ravi quite a bit. Uh, so we have to, uh, you know, focus on outcomes to increase the agility and the flexibility. Also, uh, to, to provide employees with a varied uh, uh, and adaptive and flexible roles, right? So that they can acquire cross-functional knowledge. Again, I don't touched on it. You know, yeah. this is very essential now. So versatility and fungibility is is the is is the key, because uh, talent need to be multi-purpose and also should be able to, uh, you know, handle multiple things. So in VMware, we do have an innovative approach of hiring uh, top talent who bring wide a variety of mix of creativity, originality, and problem solving. That's what we are focusing now. It's called guided by outcomes. We call it as a go hire. Uh, you know, it's a methodology that helps us attract and assess the talent based on the performance outcomes, not really on the individual qualification. Uh, so I also want to just call upon it. Right? I know we are out of time. I also want to yeah. call that, you know, the way we are writing the job descriptions to attract talent, that's changing as well. So if you need to hire someone, uh, you know, you just say, for example, if you have need to hire someone to, to help you cross a river, you could write a before or at, at, at least typically you would write a job description describing a highly qualified, probably a bridge builder, or you could describe yeah. the performance outcome, leaving the you know uh, the door open for innovative ways of working. So we're not really looking for a uh, you know, specific bridge builder here, right? So uh, because, many organizations because the requirements themselves could change. And you want that exactly, result. and then I think uh, again uh, you know again uh, probably I don't touch on it. So many organizations are going through a digital transformation one way or the other. So in order to achieve uh, business outcomes, many cross functional teams need to need to come together, and they need to you know work cohesively and deliver together. Uh, so successful completion of the goal that too as a as at a team level as a teamwork that's what matters not really at an individual effectiveness any longer and that's the behavior that, that we are looking at great i think you touched upon these uh, points also ravi arun so flexibility resilience uh, right so we i think we covered quite a bit it's been a very exciting session and something it's not just a session there's something we'll be looking forward to uh, hearing from yeah. you through the year too uh, we are out of time, but thank you so much, Rupa. Thank you so much, Arun, and thank you so much, Ravi, for coming and sharing these insights. Definitely one of the most exciting uh, sessions for today, as well as for the next two years. So we hope to connect again soon. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.